And if human rights violations can be committed with impunity, then it makes a mockery of human rights. And it only guarantees that these same crimes are going to be repeated again and again. Very briefly, how can we move towards creating a new culture, culture of accountability for human rights abuses? One of the first tasks is for us to uncover the truth. The people of Iran, many of them still don't know that in 1988, 5,000 people were executed. One of my students, who was a very devout believer in all the promises of the Islamic Republic, who would not believe when I told her about what has been happening in Iran's prisons for the past 30 years, came to me on the first day of school this year and apologized, saying that I was in the streets when the Basij were beating an old lady to death. And now I understand what has been going on behind closed doors for 30 years. For the first time ever in the history of the Islamic Republic, Mr. Kavubi, former spokesperson of the parliament, has spoken openly about the use of rape in Iran's prisons, something that has been going on for many years. For the first time, the masses in Iran are talking about human rights, and the mothers of those who have lost their children are calling for justice and accountability. Through our activities in the Iran Human Rights Documentation Center, and through the activities of many, many other human rights organizations, we have to make clear in an objective way the truth of these crimes, but more importantly, we have to identify the perpetrators. We have to name and shame those that are responsible and send a message to them that just like Slobodan Milosevic, who was one day untouchable in Yugoslavia, that one day they too will not be in power and that we know who they are and that there will be a cost attached to their participation in these mass crimes. responsibility 
and standing in solidarity with the people of Iran in order to bring to justice the perpetrators of crimes against humanity. The international community, the Europeans in particular, have done nothing, nothing since the brutal crackdown to hold Iranian leaders accountable. The fact is that the only thing the international community cares about is the nuclear issue, is the security of Israel, is the stability of its oil supplies, and guaranteeing their business corporations lucrative contracts. Human rights is something to which lip service is paid. Perhaps a resolution is adopted in the United Nations, while at the same time, business continues as usual. We shouldn't forget that the first death sentences against the protest leaders have come just a few days after the 5 plus 1 group meeting in Geneva, where the signal to the Iranian government by the Obama administration, by the Europeans, was that if you're willing to enrich uranium outside of the country, we're basically not terribly concerned about human rights. <coughs> because if one is really concerned about human rights, one would attach a price, one would attach a cost to the violations. And a small slap on the wrist is simply not a way of taking human rights seriously. Why does the United Nations Security Council impose sanctions on the individuals involved in the nuclear program, such as travel bans and asset freezes, but does not do the same for those responsible for crimes against humanity? Why are those responsible for crimes against humanity free to travel to Europe? Why is there no talk at all of at least some form of targeted sanctions against these individuals? Why have certain governments rushed to attend the celebration of President Ahmadinejad's inauguration instead of standing in solidarity with the democratic movement? These are...
maintaining this whole apparatus of security, uh, the government instead begins to meet the real demands of the people for human rights, for freedom, and for economic opportunity. So I end by appealing to our friends here, first of all, to speak out, to make human rights the central demand of the democratic movement in Iran, to expose the truth, and also I appeal to our Dutch friends to call on their governments not to be so short-sighted and uh, uh, not to engage in wishful thinking and realize that the problem with Iran is not nuclear capability, the problem is the nature of the regime. And until that problem is addressed, the people of Iran will not have freedom and the international community will not have stability. Thank you very much.